Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In this week's video we're going to be checking out a new feature that's been added to Elemental and that's the ability to add flip boxes. Now flip boxes are a great way of adding information into your site in a visual interactive manner. So I'm going to take you step by step through how we add them, the settings you can apply to them and all the different styles you've got to work with. So let's take a look at how we can do all of that right now. So I've got a couple of example flip boxes that I've created on screen and as you can see we've got great ways of interacting with the content especially if you're dealing with a site where you've got a lot of content but you don't want to overwhelm the site visitor. This is a great way of quickly and easily being able to create interactive elements that allow you to give more information when the user interacts with them. So let's jump over to the admin section of the website with Elemental and let's take a look at how we add them to the site. So I'm going to jump over and you can see I've got a page open and I'm ready to start adding some content in. So what I'm going to do is come down to add new section. We're going to split this up into three columns. That allows me to put three different flip boxes in there. So what we'll do is we'll go and style the first one. Then we'll copy that over and take a look at some of the other options available. So if you take a look on the pro elements, you can see we now have flip boxes added into the already extensive range of different widgets we have. So I can simply drag that over, drop it in the element area, and you can see we now have all the settings ready to start working with. Now, this will automatically resize based upon the column that we have to work with. So let's just say, for example, I drag this column over. You can see that will automatically start to update the entire layout so we make sure that we've got a really nice way of interacting with that content and we don't have to go in and manually set the size of this. So let's just put that back to roughly where it was and we'll control the size of that a little later on. So we'll set that back to about 33%. That'll do. So now if we take a look on the left hand side, you can see we've got our usual tab structure, content style and advanced. And then in each one of those different tabs, we have a range of different options we have available to us. So you can see we've got the ability to set side A, which is the side you can see on screen at the moment, and side B, which is when you roll over. So we can control those, we can control the content in there, the way that the colors are displayed and a whole range of other different things. So let's come back to side A and let's take a look. You can see we can choose content, we can choose background. From inside the background, we can choose the different types. We can have classic, where we can choose an image or a color, or we can go in and we can create a gradient in there. So we're gonna keep this simple and just choose a color in there. So let's just come up and say, we'll just choose a nice, uh, let's go for a nice dark blue. And you can see it changes the color over automatically once we select that. If we wanna fine tune and tweak that, we can quite easily use the different slider options or the color picker until we get exactly what we want yeah, let's go for something like that. It's not particularly pretty, but it shows what we're doing. If I wanted to, like I say, I could put an image in there, but I'm going to leave it as just color at the moment. Let's jump over to side B. We'll leave that the color as it is, but you can see we can now go through and choose the content. And again, we can flip between the background and content so we can choose what goes in there. So you can see we have the title and description. So the title is where it says this is the heading. And underneath we've got the content, which we can easily add to. It automatically inserts a button underneath that with the text for click here. If we take that out, you'll see the button automatically disappears in much the same way that all of the different elements inside Elemental. If there's a button, once you remove the text, it then removes that button from the screen. But we can put that back in. We can say, click me, and you can see as soon as I do that, the button is automatically put back in there. We've then got the ability to put the link in for whatever we want to go to. So let's just say we're going to go to WP Tuts. .co.uk so you can go and find out all those wonderful tutorials that we upload for you. Apply link on button only. You can see we've got whole box so the entire sort of side B of the box becomes a clickable element or we can restrict that to just being the button. Again a great cool choice. We can also set how the link is opened up. So you can see it says, do you want to open link in a new tab? We tick that and you can see that now we'll set that to a link that will open a new tab up, which is, is useful. Depends on your sort of outlook on whether you like to open new tabs or not. Then finally, we have the settings underneath, which we can come down. You can see we can now go through and choose a range of different options. We can control the height, the border radius, the type of effect the direction of the effect and also switch on and off the 3D effect. So let's start off by taking a look at the different types of effects and the directions and then we'll take a look at the 3D in a little more detail. So you can see when we take our mouse over it shows us it now flips 
We can come down and choose. We can say, let's have slide instead. And you can see that once we take our mouse over, that now slides up and down. If I don't want to go from bottom to top, I can come in and I can say, well, let's go from left to right. So you can see, take your mouse over. We go down, you can see it interacts, whichever way we choose. And again, we can choose a different option. We can say, well, let's go for fade. So mouse over, you can see it now fades between the two. So it's a little more subtle, the effect. But again, still pretty cool. So let's go back to flip. Uh, we'll just leave that as it is. But now let's go through and choose the 3D depth. And what this is going to do is create the illusion of 3D. In other words, it'll all look normal until you take your mouse over it. And when it rotates around or flips or whichever way it sort of goes about it, it will look as if the text is actually higher up or closer towards you than the background color and the text on the B side of the, the actual flip box will look like it's further away. I'll demonstrate that in a moment for you. So let's just click on 3D depth. If we take our mouse over, you can see that gives you a, a good idea, but without the background color, it kind of makes it a little difficult to see. So if I just jump back over to my demonstration section, I've set that 3D effect up on this first box and I put a darker background so it allows the text as it rotates to show just a little clearer. So you'll see once I take my mouse over, it rotates around and it looks like it's all being done in 3D space, which is a pretty cool effect, I think. Anyway, let's just jump back in there. So that's how easy it is to create that. And again, we can go through, we can choose different types of direction for the flip. So you can see very quick and easy, all pretty cool. If we jump over to the style tab, you can see we now have a whole range of different options on how the content of this particular flip box is going to be displayed. So you can see at the moment, again, it's the same as before. We've got side A, and if we scroll down, we have side B and a tab at the bottom. So we can easily come in and fine tune this. We can say, well, I want to put padding of 10 pixels, for example. If I don't want that to be the same on all sides, I can just use the chain link to unlink it. I've also got the option then for the alignment of the content. So you can see if I click on left aligned, you can see everything goes over to the left hand side right to the right hand side and so on or we can center it and we can also center or put it to the top or the bottom on the vertical position as well so we click on that it pushes it right up to the top center as you'd expect it's going to go in the middle and bottom is going to push it down to the bottom we can choose a border type if we want to have a border on there and then we can go through and specify the size of the border in other words the width of the border and the color you want to apply to it so let's just say let's go for three pixels all the way around and let's put a color of let's put a lighter green around it quite horrible looking but it gives you an idea of exactly what you can do so you can see that only applies to the a side at the moment because we haven't styled the b side of it yet now we can go down and we can choose the spacing this is all using the default spacing at the moment, and it aligns it pretty nicely. But if you want to override that, you can easily manually insert the pixel value you want to work with, or alternatively, you can use the slider. So you can see this is now going to control the space between the icon and the heading. So we can control that quite nicely and easily, or drop it down and remove any value from there so it puts it back to the default. We can also choose the primary color of the icon itself. So if I don't want that to be white, I can come in, I can choose any other color I want. And as with everything inside Elementor, you can see it updates in real time to show you exactly what the effect that you're going to get is. So let's just set that back to white so it all stands out quite nicely. And let's just jump down to the icon size. Again, anything that's left with no value in there will pick up the default value that Elementor sets. You can override that with any of these by simply using the slider or input in the value you want for that particular element. So let's just say I want to increase or decrease the size of the icon. You can see I can easily use the slider on there and everything compensates in relation to the size of the icon. And again, if I drop that down, delete out any value in there, it puts it back to the default value. You can even rotate the icon. So you see if I move that around, you can see the icon itself rotates around. So we can have a quite a funky effect on there. If we don't want our icons to be straight, we can easily go in and change the angle of those. Then we've got the same option again for the title. We can adjust the spacing, the text color. And if we want to control the typography, we can do that by enabling this. And that then allows us to go through and choose the font family, the weight, the transform, the style, the line height, and so on. So really, really great level of granular control. You can also control this on a device basis. So you can see size has the option to be desktop, tablet, or mobile, and any of the other options that are controlled via the devices being used will automatically open up and you can set those as well. So let's uncheck that and put those back and turn that off. The description, again, exactly the same thing. We can control the spacing, we can control the color, and we can easily control the typography. 
And finally, you can do exactly the same then down in the description. If we open up the side B, you can see I have all the same options available in there with the addition of the ability to control the button size and the styling and so on of the button itself, including the normal state and the hover state. All very straightforward, all very easy to work with and updated visually in front of you as you make those changes. So if we come over to take a look at the advanced section, you can see we can now go in and control the margins, the padding, the entrance animation should we want to use one so we can control that. And you can see there's all the normal options available as part of Elementor available to you in there. So you can easily come in and control that. If you want to, you can add a CSS ID or a CSS class. So you can then use the custom CSS section at the bottom to manually control the way this particular element is styled on this page. So again, really cool. Background and border, so you can see we can easily come in and choose the background and border for the elements. And again, we can come down and say, well, do we want to put a box shadow on there, for example? We can then control the type of shadow, the color, the blur, the spread, and so on. Enable and disable that. And also, we can come to the responsive. So if you wanted to make these elements only visible on certain types of devices, we can easily do that by just using the toggle switches. So all really, really easy. Now, as I said at the top of this video, these will automatically scale to fit the size of the element they're dis displayed in. So let's just duplicate this a couple of times and just drag those over to the second and third column. So we've got three instances of this particular element on the page. Now, if we come up to the section, you can see once we do that, we're now working with the actual section element itself. So it doesn't matter what's inside there, we can now control the structure of the element that those different widgets sit in. So if I don't want to have these three equal sizes, I can use any of the predefined options below. So let's just say in this example, I want to put a 50% and 225s in. I can simply select that and you can see that now updates itself. If I want to update the sort of content widths you can see i can easily do that i can use a slider on there let's take that out and reset it to the default if i want to i can say i want to stretch the section out i can then control the content whether i want that to be boxed or full width or i want to control the width of it myself i can control the column gaps so i can say let's have wide gaps in there i can control the height if i want to i can control the position so I've got a whole range of different ways of setting this up to be laid out exactly the way that I want to work with it. So that's all there is to this new feature of flip boxes that have been added into the latest version of Elementor. They're pretty cool and they can give you a great way of allowing people to interact with the content on your page and your site. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add and give the video a thumbs up. If you comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.